Mandatory vaccinations for all students and staff at San Diego Unified School District. That possibility has parents and again activists on both sides protesting. Thanks for joining us. This is a nightly check and I'm Mark Mullen. The San Diego Unified School District is conducting a virtual meeting to discuss the possibility of mandatory vaccinations. So none of the San Diego Unified School District board members are inside a building. However, Outside, a couple of hundred demonstrators were out nearly the entire day. Real mix of parents again, people against vaccines altogether. Some people not even from San Diego, some against vaccine mandates. You get the idea, some against the president's vaccine initiatives. About a dozen supporters of the superintendent's rollout of vaccine requirements as well showed up to keep the peace. Dozens of police kept the two groups separated who for the most part kept their distance and seemed to be respectful of whatever view they had. The responsible thing to do is to see long-term studies on this, to, to not be seeing recalls, to um, not be seeing side effects. And, and there are a lot of parents that they just feel like even if they saw those long-term studies, they wouldn't feel good about getting their kids the COVID-19 vaccine. We finally have a chance to turn the corner on COVID to get our kids back to their regular lives and it's incredibly frustrating. Richard Barrera says members will vote on the superintendent's plan to have all staff and eligible students vaccinated by the start of the second semester in January. That will include everyone on campus as well as visitors and contractors. Barrera says there will be limited medical exemptions and no religious or personal exemptions. You can go to NBC7.com to find out exactly what the board decides. Well, get ready to pay more to ship your holiday gifts this year. The U.S. Postal Service will be raising shipping prices from October 3rd right to December 26th during obviously the peak of holiday shipping season, right? The USPS says you can also expect delivery to be delayed this year on some first class mail. The changes are part of the 10 year plan rolled out by the Postmaster General to deal with a list of financial and staffing issues impacting the Postal Service. A shooting in Vista had the community on edge while deputies searched for the shooter. The San Diego County Sheriff's Department says about 12.30 p.m. They received reports that a man had a knife near the 7-Eleven off of North Santa Fe Avenue and Bobier Avenue. When deputies arrived there, the suspect was gone. They found him about half an hour later, we're told. The Sheriff's Department says after lots of negotiation and de-escalation attempts, deputies ultimately opened fire, hitting the suspect at least once. They say he was taken to the hospital and there is no danger to the community. The trial of the man accused of shooting and killing a worker and injuring two others inside a church's chicken in Otay Mesa got emotional as victims from the shooting took the stand today. I started hearing gunshots and I looked up and I didn't see my daughter. She had sort of disappeared from your view? I didn't see her no more. I didn't know what happened to her. Okay, that was a Rosa Martinez. She is the mother of... Uh, who was then a 12 year old girl who was inside the restaurant when the accused man, Albert Lee Blake, apparently walked in to the restaurant and shot the employees because they wouldn't accept a counterfeit $100 bill, according to police and prosecutors. Martinez was parked just 20 feet away when all of this happened back in November of 2019. Wiping tears from her face, Martinez identified Blake as the shooter in court today, but Blake's defense attorney uh, basically says nobody ever got a good look at the shooter's facial features uh, because he was wearing a hoodie and sunglasses. However, the two employees who were shot also took the stand and both did identify Blake as a shooter. If convicted, Albert Lee Blake is facing 114 years to life in prison. Insurance companies in California are feeling the pinch after having to pay thousands of customers affected by all of the state's wildfires, and now they are dropping customers in high-risk areas to try and manage future risks. The state's insurance companies dropped more than 250,000 policies in 2019 alone. Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara did issue a one-year moratorium after major wildfires to stop insurance companies from canceling we're not renewing policies, but for some homeowners, that uh, protection is running out. If you're going to be in a place that's at risk, you're going to ultimately pay uh, a price for that. In some places, uh, being declined when you apply for insurance is a wake up call that you need to take action. Well, that action is clearing brush around your home and creating defensible space. But Russell said insurance companies need to take action, too. He said they could use satellite imagery to determine risk and rates. 
The technology could help lower insurance rates for those proactive homeowners uh, since the insurance rates would be based on an individual street or home rather than an entire zip code. The state, by the way, uh, still does write fire policies. You'll soon be seeing even more scooters around parts of San Diego. Lime scooters are back. This comes nearly a uh, what, after two years that they pulled out of San Diego. This year they are back with 2,000 scooters hitting the streets in a couple of weeks. Lime is teaming up with the San Diego County Bicycle Coalition for safety courses. Uh, if someone is interested in taking that, the first ones will be held on Saturday. Before we sign off, here are your current temperatures. Dagmar has an extended forecast over at the weather section located on the main menu of our Roku and Apple TV app. That's going to do it for our nightly check-in. Have a good night.